Okay guys, welcome back to another Smite tutorial. So for people who are new to this series, what this series is, is I do a Smite tutorial on a god that you guys requested in the comments below. And yeah, I do a tutorial on how to play them, how to build them, and how to level them. So for this week, I'm doing a tutorial on Osiris, but before we get into the video, I want to ask you all who's watching this video that if you leave a comment down below on which god you want to see me to do a tutorial on next, then it helps out the series because I can do tutorials on gods that you actually want help with, rather than me just picking a god and doing tutorials on things that don't actually help you. So leave a comment now saying which god you'd like to see next week, and I'll get into the Osiris tutorial. Okay, so, yep, this is Osiris. This is his reanimated skin. That's not really helping in the tutorial. So anyway, I'll move on to the god builder and the god leveler. So first of all, I'll be explaining what to build on Osiris. The builds I explain in my tutorial series is for conquest only. Obviously, the builds don't differ too much for most gods in other game modes, but these builds are based on conquest in the god's best lane. For example, Osiris. I'll be teaching you in this video a build for Osiris in the solo lane because that is Osiris' best lane. So yeah, if you if you want any other builds from me, if you want like a build for how to play Osiris as support, or if you want to play how to play Osiris in arena, how to build them, then just leave a comment below and I can suggest some builds and items for you. But other than that, in the video I'll be showing you a build for Osiris in Conquest. So how how I would start? So first of all, I'm not going to show you what items I build. I'm going to show you how to start, and then I'll go into what items I need to build. So there's a couple of starts you can do for Osiris. You can do you can do a bluestone start, you can do a death's tall start, or you can even do where is it? You can even do a rune fudge, so a smithy's hammer start. So the dif different situations you would do these starts um, varies. So for bluestone, the reason you'd want to start with bluestone is because it gives you a lot. It, it basically makes you be able to bully early. Basically, what Bluestone does is it gives you more, it gives you mana and physical power, but its passive is whenever you hit an enemy god with an ability, it applies some of a dot dealing. I think it's thirty damage. Or did I didn't nerf it. Oh, there we go. Let me hover on this. Bring up the picture. Why won't it come up? Hmm. How about this? Okay. So Bluestone, it gives you fifteen physical power and hundred mana. So obviously, it gives you power so you can clear a wave, and it gives you mana so you can use your abilities more often, so you can stay out for longer. But the passive is what you're really interested in with this item. Enemies hit by your damaging abilities take an additional 30 physical damage over the next 2 seconds. So basically, you, the reason you'd want to buy this item is if you want to bully or if you want to outpoke your lane partner. So yeah, that's when you build this, that's if you want to play aggressive. If you want to play, I'll put it back in, if you want to play more passive, I'd recommend building Death's Toll. So Death's Toll gives you 15 physical power the same as Bluestone, but this one gives you 90 health rather than 100 mana. That's not really too important. Death's Toll's passive is the main difference between the two items. Basically, hitting an enemy with a basic attack, that means minions or gods, hitting an, a minion or a god with a basic attack restores 6 of your health and 1 of your mana. So yeah, Death's Toll is better for farming for late game, it's better for just sustaining a lane and making sure you're healthy and you don't run out of mana, whereas Death's Toll is more for fight, so Death's Toll is more for sustain, Bluestone is more for fighting. So if you want to fight, you want to be aggressive early, you build Bluestone, and if you want to play passive, you want to farm up. It's not really so much playing passive, it, it's it still does give you damage, but it's not as aggressive as Bluestone. So if you want to play a bit more passive, you still want to fight, but you want to essentially farm up till mid or late game, then Death's Toll is a better item. So yeah, if, if you have a better early game, get Bluestone. If you don't, get Death's Toll. That's how I do it. Another thing you can build is you can build Smithy's Hammer. So Smithy's Hammer is a tier below Ruinforged Hammer, and the only time you want to build this is if you're against a physical. There's also one more start I need to explain. I forgot about that. So this can work against physical, it basically gives you 25 physical protection and 250 health. So it doesn't give you any power, so you do struggle for wave clear, but it does make you quite tanky to start with. So it is an okay start, but it's not my preferred start. The fourth and final start you can do for Osiris and Solar Lane is you can start with Steel Mail. So the reason you pick Steel Mail is you build Steel Mail, which gives you protection against your physical lane partner. I wouldn't build I wouldn't build any of these two against the magic lane. You build one of these against the magic lane. But if you're against a physical guard, you can build either of these two because of your physical protection and health. The reason you'll... I'd never really build Smithy's Hammer. I'd build Steel Mail over it all the time. Because it does the same thing. It gives you physical protection and health. But it's better, in my opinion. I think Steel Mail is better, so I would never really build Smithy's Hammer. But the reason you'll build Steel Mail on Osiris is because it, you can then rush a Mystical Mail. So by buying Steel Mail and nothing else, well, one of each potion, you can then go back when you can afford Mystical Mail. And the Mystical Mail gives you 300 health and 60 physical protection, but it's the passive that really makes Mystical Mail worth buying in a solo lane. It deals 40 magical damage per second to enemies within 25 units. Basically, what this allows you to do, it gives you more damage than enemy guards because it deals 40 magic damage per second, 
And obviously, if you're a physical guard against a lane partner, they're going to build physical protection, whereas Mystical Mail enables you to do some magic damage too. So it, they won't really be able to build protections against it. So it gives you more damage, it helps you clear the lane because the tick also applies to minions, so it gives you more wave clear, more damage, and it makes you tanky. So this is a really good start for any solo laner, but you can also start with these. If you start with Bluestone or Death's Toll, you do want to pick up Boots 1. So pick up Boots 1, which is only 1,100 gold, so then you can buy an active and 2, two of each potion. So let me quickly explain. Consumables, that's the wrong consumable. Where's Mana Bot? There we go. Okay, so for each of these starts, let's get rid of you and put... Why did I just click? Let's get rid of you and put Steel Mail back in. Okay. So this is all the starts I would do on Osiris. If you build Bluestone, you get Boots. If you build Death's Hole, you get Boots and then one of each potion. Or two of each potion. But if you build Steel Mail, then you get one of each potion. And you want to try it and back when you can afford Mystical Mail. You don't really want to back before that, but I know it is quite a big... It's quite a big price from... How much... Does it say how much it is? Physical Protection... Uh, okay. So from foot, yeah, it's 1,450, so it is quite a lot of gold to back on, but if you can stay out and farm up that much gold and then back it, it's a lot more beneficial. So if you do start Bluestone or Death's Toll, you'll get boots and you'll get one of each potion. But then you can all, you also have enough money to buy an active, so depending on who you're against depends on what active you buy. In most situations, I prefer to build a curse, so I would build this, that would be the active I'd choose, but if you're against... if you're against like a Humbats in the jungle, or you're against a Guan Yu who has a stun on his ultimate, beads one is always a good item. So if you feel like you need beads, then you can buy beads. If, if you want to be a more aggressive, then I'd definitely get Creeping creeping Curse. So that's for these two starts. I'd say Bluestone, Boots, and Creeping Curse is the most aggressive start, and then Death's Toll, Boots, and either of these actives is the more passive laning start. And then Steel Mail is... The only time you really build Steel Mail is if you're against a Warrior, because you're not really going to kill each other early, so... Just getting mystical mail helps out a lot. But yeah, if, if I go over something and you disagree or you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And yeah, that's it for what you'd start in Conquest. And I'll move on to what you would generally build. Okay, so it depends on what you started. Let's get rid of all these. So if you started with Boots 1, then my first item on Osiris would be Power Boots. The reason I wouldn't build... Uh, Osiris is a attack speed warrior. is an attack speed based warrior. But the reason I wouldn't build um, attack speed boots... Um, first is because I, he's mainly ability based early game. Osiris's early game is normally using his abilities and then later on in the game he transitions into attack speed as he gets his items online. So for your first item, power boots helps Osiris out more with clear because he uses his abilities mainly to clear and to poke. So just warrior tabai helps out a lot more than and the attack speed boots. However if you started tier 2 steel mail, if you started with this then obviously this will be your first item. Okay, so if you start Death's Toll or Bluestone, Warrior, Bo Warrior Boots will be your first item, and then you'll build Mystical Mail if you're against the physical, not if you're against the magical. Or, but if you start a Mystical Mail, if you start a Tier 2 Mystical Mail, then Mystical Mail will be your first item, and then you'll build Boots. So both of these, these items are your first two items, depending on how you started, depends what order these two items get built in. Obviously don't build Mystical Mail if you are against a magical damaging guard, but you don't really see many mages in the solo lane, so this is normally what you do. Then after that, I would probably go into... It depends how... So that's the thing with Osiris. Solo lane is all about counter building. It depends who you're playing against as to what items you need. So, say for example, if you're against a physical damage a physical damage dealer, then if you're ahead, you might want to go into more power, but if you're behind, you might get some more protection. So, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to build the core items on Osiris that you have to have every game, and then I'll build... And then I'll show you some damage items you can pick on up, pick up on them, and then some defensive items you can pick up on them. So the core items on Osiris you have to build every game is I get Warrior Tower Boots. Then I would I would also want to pick up uh, Executioner. Um, I also want to pick up for, power, for core items. I'd also pick up. Would I pick up? I don't really feel like I'd pick up Chinzai. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would pick up Chinzai. And then the I I did like Heavy Hammer on Osiris. Okay, so they're his core items. They're the items I build every game on Osiris. They're not... These items you don't really have much leeway with. You normally have to build these every game, but obviously it depends who you're against and stuff like that. So yeah, you, you can change them. They're, these aren't... You have to build them every game. It's just they are... I strongly recommend you build them most games. It's really hard to do a build for a god saying you build this every single time because 
builds change dramatically depending on who you're against, what their team is, and stuff like that. Or it depends what your team is like. Say if your team hasn't really got a tanky support, say if someone played Nasha support, then your team really hasn't got much of a front line, so you might want to build Osiris more tanky so you can be a front line. That's how your team might affect it. But if their team is all is very tanky and you'll have quite a lot of health, then Shin Sires might be a good option. However, if all of their time if all of their team is very squishy and they don't have a lot of health, then Shin Sires might not be the best option. But normally Shin Sires is quite a good item. It's it's all just it depends who you're against. So it is hard to say this is the build to build. It's just I will show you good items to build in Osiris and you can choose them accordingly. Anyway, if you want more damage on Osiris, then obviously you can get Asi for more damage. I guess Mystical Mail counts as damage. It counters both. Runeforge, same, it counters damage. If you want, uh, I'm not going to put magic protection there because I'm still on a lot of damage. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for damage. And then defensive, again, Mystical Mail is also a defensive item, so I'd put it in here. You can get Stone of Gaia, or you can, no, you probably just get Stone of Gaia, I wouldn't get Bulwark. Actually, Pestilence is not bad. And what other kind of protection items would I get? Uh, where's it gone? This item isn't bad. Yeah, to that item isn't really that bad. Also, Wingblade is okay. So let me put this. Where can I put that? I'm gonna put Wingblade here. Wingblade isn't a damaging item. I'm just putting it there for the sake of it because I have no other room. And I'll quickly explain these items as I put them in. Where's Wingblade gone? There we go. Okay. So boots I've already explained gives you damage. So this is a ability based early game. I'll explain that. Executioner. Osiris is an auto attack based god. So you need attack speed items. Attack sp Executioner is probably the best attack speed item in the game. It gives you more attack speed, more damage, and it reduces protections depending on every hit. I'll read it to you. So basically it gives you 30 extra physical power, 20% extra attack speed, and every time you hit an enemy with a, with a basic attack, you reduce their physical protection by 6 and an, and an additional 8% for 3 seconds. It stacks up to 3 times. So you can, re you can reduce their physical protections by 18 plus 24%. So, Executioner just gives you a lot of pain, attack speed, and damage, which is everything an attack speed god would want. Chin Size. The reason, I, the reason I would pick up Chin Size is if they have quite a tanky team, or you just don't feel like you have much damage and you need Chin Size for that extra damage. Basically, Chin Size works great against targets with high health, for example, a tanks or a warrior who's built tanky. So, anyone who's really tanky or has a high health pool. For example, if a mage has built a Furial Staff or a Warlock Sash, it gives them a lot of health and Chin Size works well against them. So, Chin Size is passive. Basically, it gives you 30 physical power and 15% attack speed, which is similar to Executioner. The only difference between Executioner and Chin Size base stats is Executioner gives you 20% attack speed, whereas Chin Size only gives you 15. The main difference between the two items is Executioner gives you pen in its passive, but Chin Size it makes you deal 4% of the target's maximum health every auto attack. So, say they have, if they have a lot of health, you'll be doing 4% of that in addition to your actual auto attack damage. Say you're doing Say so every auto attack you hit is doing 100 damage, then you get an extra 4% of their health additional damage on top of that. That's why it works better against targets of a high health pool. So Chin Sire is good against people who are tanky. Frostbound Hammer. The reason I pick up Frostbound Hammer is because because Osiris is an auto attack based guard, I don't really think Fatalis is good on him. I just don't think he needs Fatalis. It can work, but I don't really like it that much. Frostbound Hammer works the same as Fatalis. Fatalis removes your auto attack penalty meaning you can, you can move at normal speed while auto attacking if you hit them so it means you can stay close to them and keep hitting them with auto attacks. The Frostbound Hammer, instead of removing your auto attack penalty, it makes them slow when you hit them with auto attack. So you can keep auto attacking and they are um, being slowed, meaning you can keep up with them and keep hitting auto attacks. So Frostbound Hammer and Fatalis work in the same way. You build those two items if you want to keep up to the enemy guards and you want to keep auto attacking them. And I think Frostbound Hammer is just better on Osiris because it gives him health, it gives him power, and yeah, it's just, it's just better on Osiris. So, yeah, um, I build Frostbound Hammer. If you're struggling to keep up with the enemy guards and you want to keep them close to you, so you can hit your auto attacks, that's when I build Frostbound Hammer. Okay, so the damage items. Um, yeah, pretty much, like I, like I explained before, Osiris is an attack speed based guard, so if you need more damage, Assy is also always a good choice. It gives you life steal so you can survive a bit longer, it gives you 20% attack speed, it gives you some penetration. And also, it's passive gives you more life steal if you get low. So this makes you, it makes you feel tankier because you are healing with life steal, and it also gives you more damage and penetration. So yeah, it's just a good all-round item on Osiris. So if you feel you need more damage, Assy is always a good choice if you already have these items. And then Mystical Mail. I explained why Mystical Mail was important before. It just basically makes you tanky, gives you a lot of health, and also it deals damage 
to minions and gods, which is why I put it in the damage part as well as I haven't wait, I didn't put it in the defensive part, never mind. But yeah, it's just it's just good for dealing damage in an AoE and makes you tankier. So that's it's pretty self explanatory. Runeforged Hammer, I've put this in the damage section because it's passive. 50% of your physical protection is converted to physical power. So normally in the solo lane, you're laning against a physical lane partner, meaning that the person you're um, facing against is doing physical damage, and also the minions and the tower do physical damage. So by building physical protection, you're getting protections not only from the guards that you're fighting, but the minions and the tower. So normally on Osiris, because you're normally against a physical god, you'll build mystical mail. And then if you build Rune for Arch Hammer after that, not only does it give you more health on top of that and more physical protection, it also converts the fifth it also converts the physical protection from Mystical Mail and Rune Forge Hammer into physical power. So it gives you power based on your physical protections, which is good because Osiris normally builds them, as well as making you tankier. So it gives you tank tankiness and damage, which is good on Osiris. It doesn't give you any attack speed, but oh well. Wingblade. Wingblade is it's a very situational item. It's good on most gods. It gives you health, so it makes you tankier, or makes you feel tankier. It gives you cooldown reduction, which is good on any god. It basically makes your cooldown shorter, so you can use them more often. It gives you attack speed, which is great for Osiris, like I've explained. He's an attack speed god. And it gives you movement speed, which is also good for Osiris, because he wants to keep up with the gods, so he can use his melee or attacks. And yeah, the reason you'd want to build a wing blade on Osiris is, say, if, you, if the jungler or the solo lane, or if their team has a lot of slows, then you build wing blades, because... Wingblade passive, basically when you get slowed, instead of getting slowed, you move faster. So it's good for chasing people, like say if you're trying to chase down an enemy, but someone slows you to try to prevent you from chasing them, it'll give you more movement speed so you can catch up even better and then kill them, so they can't get away. And it works on the other way as well, so if you're trying to run away and someone tries to slow you so they can catch you up, then Wingblade will proc and then you'll be able to run away and they will not be able to catch you. So it's it's very situational. If their team has a lot of slows, Wingblade is an okay item. But I normally wouldn't build it on Osiris. It's just up to you. Like I said, it, everything's situational. Okay, now on to the defensive items. For Osiris, Midgardian... I've already said Mystical Mail, but that's also a damage item, so I've already explained that one. Midgardian Mail. Midgardian Mail is good if you're against an auto-attack guard in lane. For example, if you're in lane against a Bakasura, Bakasura is heavily based on auto-attacks throughout the whole game. He's never He never does really any ability damage. He's always auto-attack. So by building Midgardian Mail, you get physical protection, you get health, and also it's passive, reduces the enemy's... When it, basically, how it's passive works, I'll, I'll just read it. Whenever you're hit by an enemy god's auto attack, there's a 30% chance to slow your enemy's movement speed and attack speed by 30% for 2 seconds. So say if Bakasura tries to ult you, or say if he just uses free jumps and you tries to um, aggress onto you, there's a 30% chance when he hits you with an auto attack that his attack speed will be slowed and he'll move slower. So even if he does manage to keep up to you, he'll be able to use his auto attacks left often, which helps you survive. And also he's slowed, so you can outrun him if you just run away. That's why I would choose Midgardian Mail against an auto attack physical guard. And it doesn't even and it doesn't necessarily mean like you have to be against a auto attack person in lane to buy this. Say if their hunter's really strong or like really fed and you just want some protection against them, Midgardian Mail also works really well against hunters for late game. Okay, Son of Gaia. Son of Gaia is Good if you're, you can build it early, if you're against a magical laning partner, or if their team has a lot of magic damage, say they have a magic jungler and a magic mid lane, and you want to get some magic protection, you can build it later on in your build, which just helps you protect against them. Pestilence. It's good against healers, so if they have healers on their team that are magic damage, then also obviously it reduces healing, that's part of its passive, it also gives you more health and protections. So if you're, if you're against a magic person in lane, you might want to build it early, but if they have quite a lot of magic damage on that team, you can build it um, later on. Spirit Rub. Spirit Rub gives you cooldown, it gives you health, it gives you 40 of each protection. Oh, it doesn't give you health, never mind, my bad. Spirit Rub gives you 40 of each protection and 15% cooldown. But the main reason you build Spirit Rub is because of its passive. So whenever you are hit by a crowd control, a crowd control ability, which is basically a stun, a root, or any kind of CC, it's called CC, which is standing for crowd control, you gain 15% damage mitigation for 3 seconds. So say if Kamakana yawns you, that's classed as a CC. So when Kamakana hits you with his yawn, you'll be able to you'll get 15% damage mitigation for 3 seconds. So after being hit by that yawn, for the 3 seconds following that yawn, even if he wakes you up, any amount of damage you take for that 3 seconds, you'll take 15% less of that damage than you normally would if you didn't have this item. So Spirit Robe is just a good item to give you a bit of each protection, gives you a bit of cooldown, and it makes you tanky when you get hit by CC. So Spirit Robe is a good protection item. These are all the items you can consider. Well, these are all the items I consider when I play Osiris. 
So like I said, you can just build these accordingly on how the game is going or depending on what that team is. For example, I will because I can't really give you a build that's set in stone that you build every game, I'm gonna give you a situation that and then I'll explain what I would build in a situation. So I'm in lane. I'm playing Gosaris in solo lane. I'm not worried about anyone else apart from the lane and the jungle. I'm ignoring my jungler. So I'm a Saris in solo lane, I'm against a Bacchusaurus solo. And the person no other way around. I'm a Saris in the solo lane, I'm against a tier in the solo lane, and there's a Bacchusaur in the jungle. Okay. So this is what I will build in, in that situation. Actually, change Bacchusaur in the jungle to, I don't know, a Bastet, because she's more commonly in the jungle than a Bacchusaur. So tier solo, so I'm a Saris in solo lane against a tier and a Bastet in the jungle. Okay, so what I will build is, if I'm against a tier, I would start with um, Bluestone Pendant. So I would start Bluestone Pendant, and I will get Boots tier 1. And I'll pick up tier one weakening curse. So I build that to start with creeping curse and one of each potion. Let's buy that and buy that. Okay, so that's my start plus weakening curse. That's what I build against the tier. And let's get rid of these. I've already built those items. Actually, no. Scratch that. But that that is one start you can do against tier. That's if you want to play more aggressive and your feeling of being aggressive. However, how I will build it. So that is actually a viable star that works perfectly fine in most situations. But just because I play support and I'm used to being quite tanky, I would build tier 2 steel mail. So I will, I will build tier 2 steel mail and I will go to lane with one of each potion. I'm not going to put the potions in because I, I can't bother really. So yeah, I'll build this and then once I've gone back to base, I will then build a miscal mail and go back to lane. And obviously once I get more money, I will then build the power boots. I won't go into actives now, I'll explain the actives after I finish this. So I'll build this and then this. So my first two items against a tier and a bastet. Then after that, I hmm, what would I build after that? There's, there's so many options you can do. You can build it in any order really. I probably get either Frostbound or Runeforge, I guess. Actually no, I will get Executioner. It, de it depends how you're doing. Okay, up, up until this point. So I've got Mystical Mail and Power Boots. Say I'm doing quite well, I've killed the bastet once and killed the tier once, so I'm 2-0. The tier's dad once, the Bastet's dad once. I'm feeling quite good. I've done good in the laying phase. I would then build Executioner because I don't really feel any more protection because I'm already ahead and I want to do more damage. However, if you, if it was the other way around and you was already died twice or you died once and you want to get more protection, you can go into Runeforge or Frostbound Hammer. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, my voice cracked then. <laughs> I apologise for that. Let's say for the sake of argument, I've got two kills, I'm 2-0 and, and I'm doing good in lane. So I'll build Executioner then. Then after that, I will probably build Frostbound Hammer. Just so I can slow the tier, I can keep up to him, and I can just keep bullying him essentially because I'm already winning. I want to keep bullying him, keep up the pressure. So Frostbound Hammer enables me to slow him. And then after that, I would probably build Chin Size because tier normally builds protections. So he obviously has quite a lot of health and he's a warrior. So I'll build, not that one, I will build Chin Size. And then to round it off, it depends what their team is. If their team's doing quite well, I probably, I probably will go into more protection. So after this point, I'd probably either get. A magic protection item depends on if their team has quite a lot of magic damage, or I'll go into spirit robe. So let's just say for the sake of argument, they haven't got that much damage, that much magic damage, they're mainly a physical based team, I'd probably go into spirit robe because they have a lot of CC as well as. So yeah, that's what I would build in that situation, but like I said, you just have to change it depending on who you're playing against. And yeah, that's been it for Osiris's god build, actually no it hasn't, I need to do his actives. Other than that, so that has been it for his build. So let's get rid of all of that, I can't bother clicking all the X's. So, good, good actives on Osiris. It depends who you're laning against, so let's just, let me just put them all in and I'll explain them. Da -da -da. Where's it gone? That, and where else is it? That. Okay. So, Heavenly Agility. The reason I put this in is because it, it could go in two ways. So, you could either build Heavenly Agility or Achilles Spear. The reason I didn't put Achilles Spear in is because there's no room on the tab. So, Heavenly Agility is good because it gives you, it gives all of your allies an increased movement speed buff and it gives all of your allies immunity to slows as well as you. So it makes you move faster and it makes you immune to slows. It's just a good act it's just a good active to make your team faster, make you immune to slows, it's good for escaping, it's good for trying to catch the enemy team. It's just good all around. Achilles Spear. Achilles Spear is great for being aggressive if you're ahead and you want to fight and you're doing really well and you can outbox your, your enemy lane partner quite easily. Achilles Spear is good because it gives you more movement speed, more protection it gives you more movement speed, more life steal and more attack speed. But on the flip side it makes you take more damage. So if you are doing really well and you're not really in much of a situation, you're, stomp you're stomping your lane, 
then I start um, I can use spear is good just to keep up the pressure it also because Osiris hasn't actually got any lifesteal well, with most builds for Osiris you don't actually build any lifesteal so Achilles Spear um, gives you lifesteal by activating it, it's active every 30 seconds so you can pop Achilles Spear and heal off the wave. So it also gives you a, quite a bit of sustain in lane, so it's quite a good item if you are feeling quite confident. Purification Bees, I don't, I don't need to explain, it's just great, it's just a great active for any god in, in the game other than support really, because it just cleanses CC. That, I don't need to explain that item, it's always a good active, so you can build it if you feel like you need to cleanse CC. Shielded Teleport, it's quite a common thing in solo lane, you'll only ever see it in solo lane. Basically all it does is it means you can teleport to towers, so you, so it just means you can get back to lane faster and outfarm your opponent. Or it does the opposite, you can, you can um, teleport to wards once you have it max rank. When you have it max rank you can teleport to a ward. So say if you're on lane, you're clearing the wave and then your team goes for the gold fury and you need to be over there. You use your shield to teleport, teleport to a ward and you can teleport the gold fury while your lane partner is still in lane and has to rotate all the way over. So by doing that, your team can then fight 5v4 rather because their solo laner is still on his way over and you've already got there faster. And then Enfeebling Curse. I'll build either Enfeebling Curse or Weakening Curse. It depends if your lane if your lane partner has healing, you build Weakening Curse. If your lane partner has attack speed, you could build um, Enfeebling Curse. So yeah, that's how I do it. So Weakening if they have healing and Enfeebling if they are attack speed. So that's all the actives for Osiris. And now let's get into his abilities. Okay, so for Osiris in the laning phase, his 2 is his main source of clear because it's AoE, it hits 3 minions at once and it deals... Quite a lot of damage, it's also really good for poke. So the ability you'd want to max is his 2, and then you'll want to max his... Uh, I think I, I think I normally max his 3, it's because it gives you the protections. So I'll show you how I level it and I'll explain why as I go. So first of all I would max his Spirit Flail, then I'll pick up his Sickle Strike, just because it deals damage. Then I'll pick up his Spirit Flail again, and then I'll go into Judgment Tether, and then Lord of the Afterlife. So. Spirit Flail is the one you want to max, so I've got two points into it, so it's my main source of wave clear. Sickle is a good form of slow. I'm not really going to explain what the abilities do now, I'll be doing that in the next part of this video. And then Judgment Tether is your second priority. Okay, so then from there I would get Spirit Flail whenever I can. And at level 8, this is a really important step. So at level 8, you see this button here saying skip, which means at level 8 I would not pick up I would not level up any of my abilities, I'd wait till I hit level 9, meaning that I can then level up Spirit Flail and Lord of the Afterlife. So if I go back to level 8, I, Spirit Flail is blacked out because I've leveled it twice in a row, and in Smite you can't level the same ability three times in a row. So rather than putting a point into one of these abilities, I will skip it, and then I can put a point into my ultimate, and then one in Spirit Flail, meaning I max my Spirit Flail as fast as I can. And then from there, I would level his free. So, once, you've, once his 2 is max, I would then put all the points I can into his 3, picking up his ultimate whenever you can. And then lastly you would max his 1, picking up the ultimate whenever you can, and then finish off like this. That's how I would level up Osiris. The reason, I'm not really going to explain why I'd max his 3, I'll explain all that in the next part of this video. So I think I'm done with his god build and his leveling. Like I said, if you have any questions and you're unsure, or if you're unsure about anything, just leave a comment below I'll f and I'll be happy to explain it to you. And also, I'm just going to remind you that this series works better if you leave a comment saying on which god you'd like to see me do a tutorial on next week. Because that way I can do gods to actually help you rather than me just picking one. And I will see you in the next part. Okay guys, welcome back to the second part. I'm going to keep this um, this part fairly brief because I just realised how long the last part was. It was almost half an hour of me explaining how to build and how to level Osiris. So yeah, now I'll go over quickly on how, to, how you would use Osiris' abilities in an actual fight and what they actually do. So, Osiris is passive. Basically, every time you use an ability, you lose a body part. So you can see his passive meter here, if I use an ability. There we go, I have one marker and passive, and his hand is missing. And you can see on the actual model, his hand is missing, by it going all yellow and grey. If I use another ability, there we go, my other arm is missing. As you can see, that hand is now missing. I'm 2 out of 8. If I keep doing this, I'm now missing my entire arm. Then if I do it again, I'm now missing the entire of both arms. And so on and so forth. So as you keep stacking up this passive, you keep losing... Um, your body parts and eventually going hollow. So if I can do this, there we go. Now as you can see I am completely hollowed out and I have all of these passive meters. Basically meaning every auto attack I use, every, every auto attack that hits gets rid of one of these meters. So if I hit auto attack, if I hit an auto attack on the Odin, there we go, one of the meters has fell. So basically when your passive meter is full you no longer take a movement speed penalty. So normally when you auto attack in smite you go slower while you are auto attacking. 
while Osiris has this passive up and active, he can auto stack at full speed. So as you can see, this is how fast I'm moving now. And if I get rid of all these passive stacks, you can see the difference. In, you can see the difference when I auto attack and when I am not. So this is me walking normally. If I auto attack, I move much slower. So that's what it gets rid of. Okay, that's his passive or sorted. And also, when you're in that form, you can walk through deployable walls. So say if your mirror places a wall or four walls or you're in an Odin cage, if you are glowing like that, you can just walk through them. Which is, it's, it's kind of hard to remember when you're actually playing it, but you can walk through them. Okay, so Osiris' first ability. It's just a line that throws a sickle. <laughs> throws a sickle that sticks into them and slows them. So basically, yeah, that's pretty much all it does. When you hit them with the sickle, it slows them for 20% for 3 seconds. Like so, it deals damage in that area. And, yeah, it only hits one target. So if you fire it through a wave of minions, it doesn't hit all the minions. It doesn't work on minions, I don't think. It only works on guards and it only hits the first guard. It doesn't go through them. Okay. So now his second ability is a small circle, which is his main source of wave clear. So when you use this, there we go, it deals damage in a circle location, but it doesn't slow. So the way you want to combo your first and second, ability, second abilities is you use your first one first, hitting them with a sickle, and you use them two, which detonates the sickle, and puts. And you can see the sickle gets bigger inside them. So if I do it the opposite, so if I use my spirit flail, as you can see, there's no big blue scythe sticking out of them. And if I use it with my wand, you can see the big blue side sticking out of them. So basically how it works is, if I hit them with if I hit them with my sickle first, sickle strike, which is his first ability, it slows them for 20%. However, if I hit them with my second ability while the sickle strike is applied to them, it'll double that slow effect to 40%. As you can see, there we go, it's slow for 20%, hit them with it. You can see the big blue sickle, which means they are slowed for 40%. So that's how you use those two abilities, you use your sickle strike first and then your spirit flail. Your third ability is called Tether something? Oh, Judgment Tether. Basically, at max rank, you get 30% damage mitigation plus 5% per second while this thing is applied. So, what this essentially does is, when I cast this ability, it will attach a Tether to the guard in front of me, giving me 30% um, damage mitigation and 5% for every second that it is on the guard. After a short duration, if the Tether is still in range and it is still attached to the guard, they will become stunned. But the way, to, the way to avoid the tether is by walking out of this um, target location. So if I fire the tether, as you can see, you can see they are tethered to me. And after the cer certain duration, they become stunned. However, if they leave that circle or I walk away and they are no longer in that circle anymore, the tether will break and they don't get stunned. And I also lose the protections if everyone is out of the thing. But as long as someone is in it, I still gain the percentage mitigation. And finally, his ultimate. His ultimate is called Lord of the Afterlife. Let me just get out of his passive state. Let's just use, these, use up these passive auto attacks. There we go. So his ultimate is called Lord of the Afterlife. This is the target. It's a very small target and hard to hit. Basically, it deals damage in that target location. It reduces their healing by 100%, meaning they can't heal while they are hit by this ability. And that lasts for 6 seconds. So when I ult the Odin, you'll be able to see a spirit can of Odin floating above his head. And that means um, while that is up there, it means he can't heal at all for that duration. And also, when you use your ultimate, it, it gives you all of the stacks in your passive meter, meaning you can walk through walls and you can auto attack without taking, move, without taking a movement speed penalty for six auto attacks. So this is what it looks like. There we go. That um, Odin up there means he can't heal, and when it goes, it means he can heal again. There we go. Which is why Osiris is quite a good counter to most healers, and as you can see, my passive is full, so I can now auto attack without taking any movement penalty. So the way you want to use Osiris' abilities. I've already explained how, to, how you use just one, 1 and 2. So you just 1 to hit them with a the slow, you use just 2 to double the slow and deal more damage. Then you can keep all attacking them, hit them with the 3. So so once you've applied all your slows, you'll use your 3, which enables you to keep them in the range easier unless they jump out. So if they haven't got a jump while their jump is down, you hit them with the slows to get them close to you, then you use the tether, and then because they are slow, so they can't get out of the tether range, meaning they'll be stunned and you can get a lot more 3 auto attacks in. And then when they become stunned, you can then hit your ultimate for free. I'm not going to sit around and wait 30 seconds for my ultimate to come off cooldown just to show you. But basically, you use your 1, your 2 to slow them. Then, then you use your tether. Then they become stunned and then you can ult on top of them. So you are guaranteed not to miss. That is how you use Osiris' abilities. And that is the end of this tutorial. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy and you are new around here, please do subscribe. And I'll see you in my next one. Thank you for watching.